biochemists and welcome to this episode of Bale's Chemistry. Today we're going to be introducing the transition metals topic which is 2.5 of the AQA A-level chemistry specification and it's on paper one of your final exams. If you're not already a subscriber make sure you hit the button down below so you don't miss out on any of my weekly episodes helping you to become a better chemist. So the transition metals are often thought as the metals in the middle of the periodic table. They're highlighted here in orange. This is also known as the D block. This is because the highest energy electrons for these elements occupies the D subshell. Now it's not all elements in that middle block are transition metals. The IUPAC defined transition metals as an element whose atom has a partially filled D subshell or which can give rise to cations with an incomplete D subshell. So you need to have a partially filled D subshell as either the atom or the cation to qualify as a transition metal. Now when it comes to our A-level studies, our main focus is the period four metals. So we're not interested in the rest of the transition block. And we also don't include scandium or zinc. If we look at their electron configurations, we can see that scandium doesn't have a complete D subshell, whereas zinc does. So zinc doesn't meet that part of the definition where it's got an incomplete D subshell at the moment. Both scandium and zinc form stable ions. If we look at scandium, then when it loses three electrons, it has a very similar electron configuration to that of argon. So again, it doesn't have an incomplete D subshell. And if we look at zinc, when we take zinc into an ion, we lose its two electrons and zinc now has a very stable electrical configuration with a full D subshell. We can clearly see that zinc doesn't meet the IUPAC requirements for transition metal, having neither an incomplete subshell as an atom or as its cation. Scandium, however, is a bit tricky. Many chemists include scandium as a transition metal because of the incomplete D subshell as an atom. But for our AQA syllabus, we don't. The electron configuration across the period four transition metals almost fit a pattern, with most elements having a complete 4S subshell and then an incomplete 3D subshell. However, there are two exceptions to this rule, and you'll have come across these in your first year studies when you looked at the electron configurations. Both chromium and copper place one electron in the 4S subshell before going on to fill the 3D subshell. All of the transition metals go on to form ions with partially filled D subshells. When transition metals form ions, they lose their electrons first from their 4S subshell. For cobalt oxidizing to cobalt 2 plus, it loses its 4S subshell completely. For iron forming iron 2 plus, it does exactly the same. And then for vanadium becoming vanadium 3 plus, it loses two electrons from the 4S subshell, so that disappears, and then the final electron from its 3D subshell. When we look at the physical properties of transition metals, they don't change much across the period. They have a metallic structure, they have a high density, a high melting point, and a high boiling point. By contrast, the chemical properties of transition metals are much more interesting. Transition metals can form complex ions, and we're going to learn about this in the next episode. They can also form coloured ions, and we've seen many of these in things like copper chloride, which we might have already used in the lab. They also make great catalysts, speeding up many of the really important industrial processes. And finally, they have variable oxidation states. We learned about oxidation states in the year one topic, we learned about redox. Transition metals are able to have more than one oxidation state, which gives them some of their unique chemical properties. That's it for this episode on transition metals. We've got loads more videos coming out, so make sure you check out the playlist. I hope you've enjoyed learning about transition metals today with me here at Bales Chemistry. Hit the thumbs up below if you have.